need a refresher. So let's get started here then, guys. So as always, we're going to get out of this screen right here. We're going to head on over to our dashboard. So we can get into our dashboard by heading on over to DAOR.com. And from DAOR.com, you'll do member login, MLS login. And it's going to take you to your dashboard. This is always the best place to start with the dashboard because it shows you all of your benefits in one place. Okay. We're going to first go ahead and scroll on down to the DAOR, Association Resource Benefits. There we can see a title, a tiled CAR. We're going to go ahead and click on that. They'll take you to the CAR page. This is a back end page. That's why this says this is not found. But we can see at the top, it already says, hi, Joey. You know you're signed in to CAR online if it says hi or if it says hi and your name. If it says sign in, then you're not signed in. We're going to go ahead and click either sign in to sign in or click hi, Joey. We see the first option is access zip forms. I get calls on this all the time. I know they change things just a little. So we do get this new screen every time we click on access zip forms. We have to take another additional step. This is to show you and share with you information. We have things like the transaction. As you did know, once upon a time, Glide was offering a transactional software and management. I believe they still do. But you also have the Realtor Secure Transaction in case you need any tips or training on how to use any of these products. We're going to go ahead and go into Access Zip Form in yellow. Again, now this is going to take us to the page that verifies your membership. Once that turns orange or yellow, continue to transactions. It's going to open up a brand new page. This brand new page is going to open up. It might take a while, depending on how much is in your software. For you brand new agents, it's going to take a little bit while to load the software every time. Shouldn't take more than about a minute or two. All right, and now before we get into the software, something else I did want to say. For you, those of you who are joining us virtually, if you're joining us through Zoom or through uh, the GoToWebinar virtually on your phone, please, the DAR asks that you do not drive while operating the phone and coming to my training. We started here inside of the dashboard. That's the first thing that we come into inside of the zip form transactions. As always, we're going to start at the very top right of the me section. So I already have a photo attached. You might just have a silhouette of a photo. We're going to go into the me section because it's crucial that we set up the settings. And this goes across all benefits. The profile and settings we want to set up to make sure the information on there is current, active, and relevant to us today. And we're going to go ahead and go into profile and settings. I also want to take you guys through here because I get a lot of calls on this when people do office transfers. So the first section that we get into is the about me section. All your information, first name, last name, email. If your agent license number says false, that just means you haven't put one in yet. So make sure that you put in your license number there. You'll make sure you click save the little green at the top right. Moving along the right, we have the sign in and security options. If you need to update your password or set a two factor authentication to verify that it's you going in. The tab to the right is the offices tab. This is the information that is correlated directly at the bottom of your forms. So if you make an office transfer, it is your responsibility to go into your legal forms and update this information. When you update this information at all, it's only going to apply itself to new forms generated. If you have already a transaction set up, a transaction going, you will have to generate a new form in order to have the new information be displayed on there. Finally, just going through real fast, we have the different form libraries. A lot of you guys coming into zip forms might see that you need to renew all of your products. Most of your products are free, covered by DAOR and your membership here, but you do have to renew those because you have to sign the terms and agreements. Next, we're going into settings, which is really crucial depending on what you want to use as your signing service. 
So through the CAR zip forms, you do have a free signing service, an e-signing service called Digital Inc. Digital Inc. 2.0 is powered by AuthentiSign, which is a, the second best, maybe leading provider of signature e-verifications, right? You get a nice little printout, lets people know their IP address, the time that they did the showing, uh, excuse me, the time that they did the signing. So we're gonna go into e-signature options here at the very top. We can see I already have Digital Inc. 2.0 selected. For some of you guys who may have your DocuSign account. Now DocuSign is a third party provider. It's not something that's provided part of your membership, which means that you will need to pay their fee. I believe it's somewhere along the lines of $250 a year for unlimited signings for being a realtor. Uh, that's gonna cost you that much for you to connect your accounts. A lot of people like using DocuSign. It's all up to you. You can use the digital link. If you needed to connect your DocuSign, you'd click on it. You can skip past subscriptions and just link your DocuSign account. You can see mine says unlink because I've already linked it. Our account preferences, things you can go through on how you wanna set up, like your default landing page, right? When you come into zip forms, where do you wanna get taken to? I have the dashboard, right? And we can also connect other things, your title integrations, if you needed that, you can connect your title. You can see your current single sign-on links. These are things that have connected through zip forms. So every process, these are your legal forms. So if you connect them to a third party, you wanna make sure that you're able to see everything that's on there. And from here, you can easily remove the link if you feel like it necessary. To the right of that, we have our notification settings, things you wanna be notified on. All notifications are gonna come up at the top right, kind of by the me section with the little bell or the little bulletin for you to see new updates. And now this could be updates on tasks or checklists, uh, any information or inbox information, transactions, your e-signatures or your sharing of those. Also, finally, for some of you who are a little bit more advanced, maybe learning a new trick, if you needed to connect that assistant or the transaction coordinator, you can through here. You have to send them the invite through this link right here. So that was just a little overview of the settings because we always want to make sure that those settings are perfect for us before we start anything. As you can see, if the office information wasn't related in your settings or if your office information was incorrect or if your license number is false, then the form would be void. So here we are at our dashboard for zip forms. Our dashboard is gonna show us a lot of information. Now, if you're looking at my dashboard and you're saying, Joey, yours looks a little bit different than mine, why? That's because I'm using a newer layout. Now this is the newer layout. I like the newer layout because as you can see, I can see all of my tasks due in a week. It's a really easy week for me this week, as you can see, no tasks done. That's because I've completed them all. This is gonna show you all of your recent activity inside of the zip form transactions. If you do, keep track of your closures and the amounts of those. You can see your potential sales volume. Nice little chart here. And you can see any signature packets at the left that are currently in signing or have completed signing. Now we can go back here and click to return to this older layout that you might be seeing yourselves. Now this older layout, let it load for just a bit. The same information, just different. Right, you have your quarterly sales commission and closed transactions up top. You have your recent activity right down the middle. The only problem with this one is I have no tasks viewable, and that's what I don't like, so that's why I do that newer updated version so we can see the tasks. And now there's a lot we can do from the dashboard. As you see, we can easily go in and view our forms if we needed to. Let's say we just wanted to put a refresher or we needed to know a specific form. Easy, we'll just view the form. Maybe we wanna start a signature packet and sign something. We can do it right here from the dashboard. We can start a new transaction. We can add a new contact. And of course we have additional tools. These tools are gonna to be very beneficial and we're gonna come back to them a little bit later so I can show you how they'd be beneficial to you. And these, these include the clause manager. Clause manager will allow you to add clauses anywhere that you need to with a, a touch of a button. Your lookup field manager, if you want to look for a specific part of verbiage on the form. You know, some of these forms are very long, so maybe you're looking for just one section. You can do it that way. Mortgage calculator, if you need that option or you need to make those calculations or deductions, you can. You have that ability here. Forms advisor and forms tutor, which are going to be the two most beneficial things for you if you need some support on either how to start a transaction or how to properly, properly fill a form of a transaction. Now, additionally, we have our forms tab. 
our forms tab is going to open up just our forms library. I have people asking a lot of times who are like, I can't see my forms, I can't see my form library. As you can see, there's nothing in the middle. The form library is going to pop up along the right. The only reason why the form library will not pop up along the right is if your pop-up blocker is disabled. So for a lot of people who are using Mac problems, or Mac, excuse me, have problems. A lot of people who are using maybe not Google Chrome, maybe they're using Internet Explorer still, have problems. We're going to go into our forms library. Your forms library includes more than just the California Association of Realtors forms. As you can see, you have American Home Shield, you have sample letters, CRMLS, in case you need the seller instructions to place into coming soon status. Make sure you have that form if you're going to put it in coming soon. We have DAOR in case you have some forms here, like a member profile office change form. I'm changing offices. We're going to go back to CAR. And so this is just to show you the forms. And we can pick a form from here and we can create a transaction from here. This is a little bit more of a difficult step. I would use this tab only when you need to look for a form as opposed to starting a transaction. This is more of like, hey, you know the form uh, ACA? And you're like, no, I don't. Let me go look it up. Instead of starting a transaction just for that one form, you have the forms library tab just so you can easily view a form. Clicking on it, whether it's the listing agreement, is going to pull it into the page. And we can click on more of them if we wanted to continue adding them to this list so that we can view it. If we needed to, we'll click this little arrow and we can either remove the form, print a sample, have an actual sample print. As you guys know, you can't just print any of these legal forms. It will be blocked by the computer. It's because they are legal valid forms. They can't be dispersed like that. The only time they can be printed is once the PDF of the signed documents come back to you. And I'm gonna get out of that form library just by touching out. Now we can see if I wanted to do anything with this form, add any information, I would have to choose save. I wouldn't be able to e-sign it even though I have all the same tools. I would have to save this because this is just a form. It's not applied to a transaction. And when I fill out this form, I have one of two ways to save. I can either create that new transaction, maybe I'm working on a form and I need that new transaction, or I'm working on a form here and I wanna send it to an existing transaction. I started working on the form, boom, done. I'm gonna send it away. As we can see, I clicked back, letting me know that unsaved data is not going to be saved. I lost it. It kicked me out. There's a lot of great tools that we're just about to get into. I appreciate everyone here. Again, if you have any questions during this training, please feel free to use the Q&A and I will either try to answer them while I go along and while I see them or at the close. So we just got out of that forms tab and we're gonna move on over to the transactions tab that you saw before it kicked us out. The transaction tab, very simple. You have one of two ways to view this information along the top Left, we can see it as a list because I have a lot of people calling me either the list or as boxes. So it's all up to you how you want to change that or your view for that. Additionally, we have transaction tools here that are similar to the dashboard in case we needed them. And all we would need to do is start a brand new transaction for our client. Now, before we get into the transactions and set one up, we're going to take one step back and go into the templates. I want to show you guys the templates and let you guys understand the templates a little here so let's go into that section one to the right are the templates you can see some of my templates here i have a listing template my residential listing my residential purchase i even have a vacant land purchase template here's what templates do when you create a template of a form all the information that you fill out on this template will automatically apply to a transaction that you apply the form to so here i have a residential listing agreement and I'm gonna plug in my name, my phone number, my email. 
Well, guess what? Every time I use that template for a new transaction, for a new residential listing agreement, my name, my phone, and my email will automatically be on there. I won't have to do anything. I mean, it's like a computer doing it for you. You only have to do it once, set it in stone, and it's done. So let's go through and let's try to set one up here. Now, we're gonna start off brand new. We'll push new template. It's gonna ask us to select the template type. This is similar to when we're setting up a transaction. What type of transaction is this going to be? We're gonna do a new listing. We're gonna enter the template name. So maybe this is the residential listing agreement. Perfect. It asks us to select a category to apply this template, right? We don't want this template popping up if we're doing a vacant land purchase because we don't need a residential listing agreement. So we only want this to pop up in residential. Secondly, we have an auto apply feature. When do we want this template to apply? So our first option is do not automatically apply this template to new transactions. Don't do it. I'll do it. I'll decide. I'll choose. Our second option, automatically apply this template to listing residential new transactions. Well, that's kind of the point of this form because this is the residential listing agreement, but maybe it's a different form that you have and you don't want it to be applied to the residential agreement necessarily. You want to add it if you want to. And then finally, we have a third option, automatically apply this template to all new transactions. Maybe this is a cover sheet or a cover page, something that you've done or you've created, an additional input or a clause that you want to add there. Uh, you can always have that set up to automatically apply that template to all new transactions. Every time you begin a transaction, boom, that cover, boom, that letter, that welcome, whatever it is, your resume. Once we do that, we're going to go ahead and click on save. Now we can see we're inside of this template. Kind of think of it like a box. We're now inside of the box of the template. How do I know that? Because at the top left, it says listing, residential listing agreement template. And if I go back to the list, I can see that I'm still in my templates tab. That's crucial because so many times I'm getting calls of people who think they're setting up a template, but they're actually starting a transaction or vice versa. They think they're starting a transaction, but they're working on a template. And so when you work on a template, any information that you add there gets applied to all of those forms. That's why it's crucial to know that you are in the template tab and then to click into that template to know that all the information you add here on any forms, any party members, any documents or checklists are going to automatically transfer to any time you create the new transaction based on the criteria set. What I mean by that is you never want to add specific client information to a template because if you add your client one's name to the template, then every transaction is going to have that one client that you helped five years ago. So we really want to make sure that when we're working inside of the templates tab, we're only adding information that's relevant, consistent, and pertinent to us. That can include our name, our phone number, Maybe if we have an in-house lender that we go to, possibly our office information, right? That can easily transfer through. That's not going to change from form to form. The only information that's going to change from form to form is the personal client. So from here, we'll go into documents. As I said, the template can be whatever you want to create. The template can be a, a, a contract, right? A, a form but it also can just be party members. Maybe you already have people that you connect with, you already have your termite guy or this guy or uh, whoever you have connected and you want your party members already attributed. You don't wanna have to keep going and adding them to every transaction. So you can add the party members and just have the template be that. You can add a checklist. Maybe you wanna take some time, go through, create a nice serious checklist based on 30 day terms of contract and maybe you don't want to have to do that for every transaction. So you're going to create the template, apply the template, and the checklist will be on your new transaction. All we're going to do from here, we have a few ways we can add a document. We can browse for a document on our computer, create a placeholder, add a form, 
grab it from our Dropbox, Google Drive, even OneDrive. So you have a lot of options here. Again, we're gonna go ahead and add a form. Now I did say this is the residential listing agreement template, so it'd be wise of me to probably get the residential listing agreement, but that's not all that I need. Like I've said, this is a template, so maybe I can add the cover sheet. Maybe I have an addendum or disclosure that I'd like to add as well, so I can add that here. Now I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the cover sheet. I love the cover sheet, but ask your own broker about what's best to utilize to do a transaction. The cover sheet makes it very easy. It compiles all of the information of the form into one. Mind you, the zip form software, what it does, it's very powerful. If you attribute client one to me, so I'm Joey, client one, every section of every form that's added, what's going to happen is the client one input is gonna automatically pull my name, Joey, because you've set me as a party member in the system. This is a very powerful system, you guys. A lot to do with it and a lot to make your life easier. I'm gonna go ahead at the top little right, that little X to get out. We can see my two agreements. Now I can set due dates as you can see, right? That's gonna be a part of the template, so I probably don't wanna do that. But we're gonna go into the residential listing agreement by clicking on it. Take us right into the agreement. Again, this is a template, so I'm just showing you. We wouldn't fill out any specific information possibly, but we could fill out the real estate broker firm. Okay, right, because that information is going to stay the same for the most part, unless I transfer offices, that information should stay the same. Same thing with this information right here. And so that information, making sure that if I am adding something, I am clicking save at the top left. I wanna save that information, right? I'll know it's saved in the middle right here. Now this is just a template, so I'm not gonna go over the tools just yet, I just wanna go through it. And I wanna show you the cover sheet, because this to me, if you haven't seen the cover sheet or you don't utilize the cover sheet enough, I don't know what you're doing. You're making it harder for yourself. The cover sheet's gonna have the whole transaction based on party members attributes. So we can see we have buyer or tenant one information, but we're gonna skip that like seller because that's all specific to the client and I don't want any of that. I only want things that are going to be relevant and consistent to me. So I'm moving past, but I wanted to show you the cover sheet to show you how easy it is. You'll input the seller information, the buyer information into this little area and it'll automatically fill up on any new form you add, any new contract, any new form, any new document that has their information. It'll automatically place either their name, their address, their city, their phone number, their email address. Same thing with property information. We'll wait till we're in a transaction. Now we are here, right? Buyer's broker's information or seller's broker's information. So we can see I added the greater DAOR on the other form and now it's pulled here. So any information that I add here, vice versa, is gonna be added to that form. Now, this is still the template, right? So we're not gonna add too much information, but I can add my office information and maybe my name. Perfect, always making sure that I'm coming to the top right and clicking that save. We'll know the information saved because we'll see it right here. And then we can go back. So again, this was just a template. I wanted to show you how to set that up. We pretty much set up the information that we want in it. We're gonna go ahead and go back to the list of our templates. We know we're still in the templates because it's highlighted green. And now's the time to go into the transaction. The moment of truth, the transaction has started for you. So it's time to set up that new client with a transaction. We'll come in here and we can either import data if we need to, but we're just gonna start a brand new transaction right here. It's gonna ask us to select a transaction type similarly to when we were setting up a template because it wants to know what form it's going to need. So we're going to do a new listing. 
Again, we can enter a specific name to help us monitor, or we can enter the property address. It's completely up to us. So let me do, perfect. And now we have two tools to support us, but it has to be a true property, right? So we have two tools to support pulling in the information directly off the MLS so that you don't have to type away all the information. That one right there is called MLS Connect. The MLS Connect is free for you. You click on MLS Connect. It'll ask you to choose the MLS name. We're doing CRMLS1, it's CRMLS. The property type, residential. If it's an active property, right, the MLS ID can help pool information. Now, Joey, how can this be active if you're starting the contract? True, but RPR takes on and off market data and you can use RPR as well and I'll show you right now. So we have our property address. It's gonna ask us to select a category for this, right? This is a residential agreement. Now I want you to see something right here under templates. Right now there's nothing, but I'm gonna go ahead and select residential. We can see all of my templates that have now been applied or shown to me, right? And now all I gotta do is select a status, whether this is active or maybe just a prospect. And we're gonna go through and select easily from my templates what template we wanted. So this is the one we just made, the residential listing agreement. If I need some comments, they go here. And we're clicking save to start this new transaction. We saw that little tag that says it was applying the template we've created. And here we are into the property summary of that specific transaction. I get people calling me all the time saying, how do I know I'm in the transaction when I'm trying to help them? Well, you know you're in the transaction if at the top right, it says transaction ID and it tells you the property address. Then you know you're in a specific transaction. Now this is the property summary or the property information. These are all basic overview, right? This is the summary. So you can see any title orders or recent activity. Again, you could change the status up along the top, right? We also have our information, signatures in progress, any required tasks that we have and any party members that we need to see. Again, down the middle is all the listing summary, purchase summary. Now, all of these details will start to be filled in one of two ways. Either we're going to come in and fill it here and it'll apply to the form or on the form, we're going to fill it out and it'll fill this area right here. Now, this includes things like the property summary, for instance, the MLS number or this information. Now, I wanted to show you how RPR can be beneficial. RPR is a really nice little step because if you connect RPR and we click it, it'll pull whatever information it can, and that's for on and off market. So it doesn't have to be an active property for you to be able to do that little shortcut of pooling the property information like the APN and things like that. If RPR has it, because it does have on and off market activities, if it has those criteria or that knowledge of that property facts, it'll input it in there for you. Now I'm not gonna do it right now only because it'll start taking me to RPR, a little different setup. Maybe for another time we'll show you or you can email me at outreach at daor.com or wait for a quick tip to come out on that. Now along the top, we have a bunch of things, right? If we needed to start an e-sign envelope, the MLS Connect to pull that information. Now, Record Connect, and as you saw, you have the zip form Record Connect. That's for $24.95 a month if you want to use that, but it's very comparable to the MLS Connect where it's going to pull in property information based on the MLS ID. So I really think you don't need that specifically to pay for that fee. It does, of course, have a few little bells and whistles that make it a little bit more nice to present or a little bit easier for you to pull what pictures you want. Uh, but like I said, it's not necessary because you have the MLS Connect and you have RPR for free, part of your membership, both which sync to your account. As you can see, we have a new feature because something that's very special that's just happened this past month, the Lone Wolf Cloud, or the Lone Wolf, the transactions, the people who create transaction zip form have acquired Cloud Agent Suite. I don't know if some of you have been on my trainings. Some of you are new members, but some of you uh, just need a refresher. I did the Cloud Agent Suites. Those include Cloud CMA, Cloud MLX, and Cloud Streams. They have merged now with Lone Wolf, and now they offer you to start a CMA directly in here or to start a transaction directly from Cloud CMA. So now you can be on the matrix, looking at a property, looking at a comparable, pull into a CMA, send it out. Wow, someone wants to, someone likes your offer, 
perfect, let's start this transaction and we can easily pull that information, easily start that. So that's really great. Check out their live CMAs, really brand new and helping you with those listing presentations. Take you to the next level, help you be the agent of the future. Right, so this is just the summary. There was a lot to say, but we're gonna go into the parties tab. Now, I'm the only one here, the listing agent and broker, but we'd be able to separate between buy side, sell side and service providers. Now, as we start plugging in information, similarly across the board in the transaction software, if we apply someone's name to the form, for instance, seller one is seller one, Lucy, okay? If we plug in Lucy's name to the form, guess what? Lucy's gonna come right in here to our parties for us to communicate with here. Now in your parties, we can see, I'll go into more actions, a few things we can do, right? Directly email. We can even share documents, which we'll get into a little bit right now, more advanced step, but it's something that's very beneficial and something that I really wanna press upon you guys this year. Um, there's, no, there's no way to get over, of course, that this past year has changed a lot of things for us and might change a lot of things moving forward on how people interact. Now, we're never going to lose that human touch and that heart for each other, but sometimes we might need to be in certain situations where we have to distance ourselves socially, or maybe we're not comfortable with having a, be a certain amount of people uh, come into our home. So I know that real estate is moving in a direction that's digital. We see companies doing it all the time, Zillow moving, a showing time moving. So we see the little steps that they're taking to this digital age. And so I really wanna press upon you guys the tools that are necessary inside of the Zipform platform to allow you to become a virtual agent. I call it the virtual agent of tomorrow because it's the agent who's already on the cusp and at the helm of the changes that are happening and everyone can fill them. And if you can't fill them, then it's just cause you're not looking and you're not seen. And I hate to be like that. I don't mean to disrespect anyone, but it's crucial that you learn this system and that you learn the new ways that it's going to start operating. Cloud CMA and it's merging with Cloud Agent Suite is not by accident. It's with a goal and with a purpose. So it's very crucial to learn the Cloud Agent Suite series, see what they have to offer and how Zipforms is going to really be at the helm of helping virtual transactions go through. We're gonna move on over to the Documents tab. The Documents tab is gonna house our template that we've just added. Now, this is our template, so if we go into the Residential Listing Agreement, we should see the information that we already had. Perfect, already there, already there. See, already applied, I don't have to do anything to this beside adding the specific client's information. And when I wanted to do that, no problem, we'll go into the cover sheet, and just add the specific client's information. Here we are, seller one. Seller one John is what we'll call him today. Perfect, s1john at gmail.com, that's working for me and his wife, seller to Sue. No, I don't really like her name this close. Seller to Sue, thank you, seller to Sue. At the top right, making sure we are, excuse me, top left, making sure we are clicking save to any information. Now that's saved and their information we're going to see now is going to be attributed to a party member. And more importantly, it's gonna be automatically attributed and put onto other forms that we have in here or any new forms that we add. Now, coming back into the residential listing agreement, one more time, we can see seller one, John. Let's see, do I have to zoom in just a little bit? Names are a little small, right? Gotta, gotta squint. Seller one, John and seller two, Sue are right here for me already added because I added them to the cover sheet. They're added to my party members and any new forms I add, guess what? John is gonna be added to all seller one inputs and Sue will be added to all seller two inputs.
Now, I want to show you some things that can help you, some tools that can help you, because sometimes we don't go over these tools specifically for the zip form. We can easily go into a full screen mode. Let's say you really want to just dive in and you don't want any of these distractions. That's why it offers that. It's just a new techie way. You can do that with Mac products where you can take off the edge of the screen so that you're just seeing the article or the content that you're looking at. All right, so we can go full screen. Again, we can't particularly print this document because this hasn't been completed yet. It won't allow us because it is a legal form and we don't do paper legal forms anymore. Unless this document was returned as a PDF, would we be able to? But this is to print the sample. Additionally, we see this, the email or the send, and we can send this document via email if we wanted someone to take a look at it, right? Now it's only going to take a photocopy and not allow them to actually update or edit any information. It's almost like it's taking a screenshot and it's just gonna send that to them to either verify the information. Or additionally, we can do the zip community, which I'm going to show you a little bit later on how to share documents through either to our service providers, either with our broker, with our team, or with our client. And we get to set the permissions for them on what they can do with those forms and how long they can access those forms. So we'll go through that in a little bit, but we also can save it as a PDF, which is the best thing to do. But again, similar to printing, it has to be completely filled. Now we have fast fill. If we click on fast fill, we see it's just going to take off all the wording and just put the inputs. What is it that you need? So for you, those of you who aren't using the cover sheet, you probably are using fast fill so that you can fast fill the form. NA fill, of course, applying those NAs wherever you need, not applicable. Any specific sticky notes that you want to add to this, right? Boom, I want to add a sticky note for this. Let's add a brand new note. Boom, right here. Make sure to take a look at this. And now if I add this, when I'm gonna send this document or if I have a team, everyone's gonna be able to see this sticky note. Or I can come back and just, boom, there's something about this that I need. And we can easily view all of our sticky notes, right? Show all, hide all, delete all if we need to. And we would just be closing. Now we can also preview the complete document, check for spelling and errors, right? Copy the document, highlight specific areas. We have more. Apply a photo, the lookup field manager, if we wanted to see a specific part or specific, specific verbiage for the lookup field manager. See, so what fields do you need? You'll go through the different areas so that you can select those fields so you can pull them up very easy. And finally, a clause manager. In case your company or in case your office has specific clauses that they want to add to forms, we would come into the clause manager and select the clause that we would need. Now you can see I have no specific clauses here. And oh, I do, example one. So we'd be able to either create a new clause here, delete, import, or export any of them. Now you're like, Joey, I don't quite understand a clause, then you're not using it. You don't need it. Now easily add the clause by clicking on an uh, input. Now this arrow right here are past inputs that we have. This is like an auto save feature right here, this little arrow. But you see this little marker, that little pen. Click on that, boom, you have your clause manager or you can change the font. In case you needed to, you can change the font, all capital. A lot of tools in here. Now, finally, this form. Joey, this is a form I've never seen before, and I'm gonna call you 10 times to try to get you to help me, even though I will not be able to help you, only the legal hotline would be able to help you. But there's two tools inside of your CAR products that are directly from the legal hotline. And those are up at the top in the gray bar, I don't know if you can see them, Forms Advisor and Forms Tutor. These are going to be the only two things that you need really to understand this platform and understand this software. Forms Advisor is going to tell you what forms are necessary for a specific transaction. And you're going to put in the details of the transaction, the buyer information, your information, where it's at, the percentage. And it's going to pull out what specific forms you need for that transaction. Joey, I've never done a vacant land home purchase. I've never done a mobile home purchase. Go through here and see specifically what forms you need. So along the left, 
we can see different things like purchase, whether it's buyer representation, what forms we'll need for a specific area, whether it's listing, agreements, or disclosures, right? Post-contract and escrow, specific offers, and this goes the same for lease, whether this is a listing, a leasing, or management, and there's some other office admin tasks specifically. Secondly, beside Forms Advisor is the more powerful Forms Tutor. Now, what Forms Tutor is, clicking on it, it's going to take us to the CAR site because it is a CAR business tool, right? Again, you have the option to go into Forms Advisor in case you need to know what specific forms you need for that transaction. But we have this Forms Tutor option as well. Let me go into the Forms Tutor by clicking Access Forms Tutor. Now, Forms Tutor is going to let you know how to fill out the form. It's going to give you a, a very detailed overview of the form and why it's necessary to fill out specific inputs of the form. So you can easily print out samples, right? And this is going to need for all of the forms inside of the library. So let's go ahead and just click this sample. Let's see. Okay, so let's start off one. I just chose a random one because I just want to show you how it goes through. So you click on these little blue dots and it tells you information specifically. You want it read to you, go ahead and have it read to you. In the real estate, that's probably what it's going to say. And you get to go through and see the sample of it and go through those different inputs. So this was just one, right? It only had one set of information. I don't have specific amount of time. We're running late here for me to go and look for the RPA. Um, but you can go through like that and click on those blue bullets to tell you specifically why that information is important and why you need to fill that out. It's a great resource for you. And if you can't figure it out from your broker, then I don't know what's happening. That's a little weird. But if you can't figure it out from your broker, from Forms Advisor or for Forms Tutor, you do have the legal hotline uh, to call. And you can get their number on the legal hotline through CAR or by giving us a call, we'll provide it to you or transfer you over. Additionally, the legal hotline also has a mobile app for you to download. So you can download the mobile app and just ask questions away on through there, start a chat right through there. I'm going into my screen again. Boom. Okay, so now we're back in the transaction. We just got out of Forms Tutor. And again, we're going to go back. That was all the information in there. Now let's take it one step further by starting a checklist, kind of going through an overview of there. Now the checklist inside of this is going to allow you to right, set up your different time frames or your different alerts. And now the checklist could have been applied to a specific template so that you can always have it based on a 30-day set of terms for most contracts. But we can see right here, we have urgent tasks, new checklist. If we need to email someone, we definitely can do that as well. So let's start a brand new checklist. Okay, so we have a brand new checklist here. And now maybe we want this new checklist we want this category to be my seller. Let's make it orange. And maybe I want to create a new task for my seller. So this task name, maybe this is a follow-up, right? And the category is in my seller. When's the due date? No due date, just keep reminding me. It's a fixed due date on this date. It's relative pertaining to either the listing date, the listing expiration, closing date of contract or offer date, and whether it's required or not. We can add a responsible party member if we have them a part of our parties, and it'll communicate them via email that they have a responsibility. We can start with a status, right? Whether this is not started or in progress, attach any documents or notes that we may need, Do that for one day over and let's click save. 
So now we have a status here. We can easily update the status to clear it from this view. Maybe we want a new category. We have my seller side, but now maybe I want, let's do the buyers. So now we have the buyer side and maybe we have a specific category to them to follow up or to reach out or to make sure uh, for the offer accepted after. Maybe we're gonna send them something or send them another form, but we have to easily do that. And now this is the new checklist, but maybe we want additional checklists and you have that ability. So now I have two checklists with two different categories and you really, this is all you. It's all what you wanna keep track of and how you wanna do it. It can be based on forms or it can be based on lunch dates when you want to meet with them. Whatever it's going to be to help you in your life and in your transaction. Now I want you to see that we have different options beside just the checklist. We also can see this information on a calendar view. Right, so we can see that I have a follow-up scheduled for tomorrow that I can easily edit, delete, or change the status. And we can change this from week to day view. So that's why I'm saying you really can keep all of your information here. Even more pertinently, you can connect your calendars. That's like your Google Calendar and stuff. You can connect them. How easy is that? We're gonna move from calendar and go finally to board just so you can see the board is gonna help you keep on track based on your tasks. We can easily create a new task. We see I have a follow-up task that I'll have to select and either move to in progress, needs review, or uh, completed, right? Finally, we do have notes. In case you wanna keep a log of detailed notes specifically on a day-by-day -day basis or when something happens in the transaction, they're gonna be part of the transaction and part of your records, but you don't need to apply them to the transaction, which means you can keep them just for yourself and for your records or you can add them to the transaction for all to see. Finally, we have our e-sign options. As you know, if we wanted to start an e-sign, now we have a new tab. So we can always, of course, come into documents. And there's a lot of ways to send a packet. So let me start off here. This is the residential listing agreement and we're about to send this document. Now here it is, just the residential listing agreement. We can click e-sign. And it's gonna have us start the one to three steps, right? Starting the packet name, selecting the forms. As we can see, it's already selected for me because I was in that form. Now, let me go back. From the documents tab, we also can choose eSign. And that's gonna prompt me to the same tab that's eSign up top. And when I come to this tab, we're gonna go ahead and click on new eSign packet. Similarly, when we do it this way, it's gonna ask us to select what documents we need based on our whole transaction document tab. Whereas the other way going through the form is only telling the system to send that one form as opposed to send specific forms throughout the transaction. So we can't send the cover sheet. It's very crucial for you new members to know that you will have an error in signing if you try to send a form that doesn't have a signature option for them. For instance, if I load up a Word document that says, hey, please call me, and I want to add it to the transaction, but I accidentally put it in the signing packet, if there's not a space for seller one or seller two, then the packet's going to fail because the system's not going to know what to do with it. There's going to be no input to do with it. It's not going to be able to move to the next page. It happens often. So we can't send the cover sheet, and we can't send anything to anyone that we're not supposed to. If you're not seller one and seller two, then you don't need to be sent the form. Because if you need to be sent the form to sign, then you have to be a part of the party. If not, then you're just gonna be CC'd on it so that you can just view it. There's a little bit of a difference there. We're gonna click the residential listing agreement because I wanna show you. But I also wanna show you that you can add external documents if you need to, again, from your computer, Dropbox, Google Box, or OneDrive. At the very top, I have the packet name, right? So the packet name, typically I like this to reflect what I'm sending so that I can keep track of it once I start building up my transactions and I have 15 different forms in here. It keeps it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna say, 
That looks good for me. It's going to ask you again what signing service. It's pertinent and important that you select the one that you need to be using. So many people sometimes will start a packet and they're in the wrong form. So that's why we went into settings to change it there. So we don't really have to keep changing it here. And we can see the DigiLink 2.0 is applied. That's what I'll be using, the free software, so we don't have to worry about subscriptions to DocuSign. And now we can add additional documents, but we're all good here. We're gonna click at the top right, next. All right, so fantastic. Now we're gonna pick our party members. As we can see, seller one John and seller two Sue have already been applied to our parties. We didn't really go check it out, but I know you guys trusted me when I said. Now I want you to see the amount that we can have inside of here. So we can have the transaction parties, but we can have our zip CRM contacts if you wanna connect those, right? We also can have our zip form contacts. We have a different contact section that we'll go through after we send this right now. Service providers, if we have any specific of them linked, we definitely can. Top producer, if we wanna use that. Our Google contacts, you'll have to link it. Our Microsoft or our Yahoo contacts. So I'm in transaction parties. Again, this is the residential listing agreement. I'm gonna select who it needs to go to. It needs to go to me. It needs to go to seller one John, and it needs to go to seller two Sue. I have them highlighted, I'll click close. Okay, so number one, as we can see, I have no signing order on. Now this is crucial and of course, you're gonna reach out to your broker and see how he would like it done or what's best for you. This is the number one call I also get on a daily basis, okay? Joey, I've sent my form about two hours ago and I haven't got it and my clients haven't got it, okay? Well, one person got it now, but no one else has got it. Okay, Joey, now two people, have, the other person got it. I don't know what happened but the other person got it. It's because there's a signing order. When there's a signing order, what that's telling the system is send this document packet only to number one first, obviously to myself, and I'm gonna have to sign it, click on the email, put my signature, the system's gonna have to verify it, it's gonna have to then send it to seller two. Same process, I'm gonna have to wait for that email, I'm gonna to have to open that email, create my account, start my signing, the system's gonna verify it, and then it'll go to seller too soon. So unless everyone is on top of their email and on top of that signing, it might take a day for to get the forms if you have a signing order. And the signing order can really change. We can do a one, two, three, but we can even do a one, two, two. Okay, we want it first and then send it to number two, secondly, right after I'm finished. Now it's really great if it's something that you wanna set up, but for a lot of agents who aren't meaning to set it up, it's delaying their forms being returned to them. So make sure that we go along that little box right there and take off the signing order. So we can see the name and the role, we can see the email, and we can add a cybersecurity two-factor authentication. Very easy, it's for five bucks. We'll add this authentication and what's gonna happen, maybe your client's like, um, you're gonna send me really important documents to my email, that doesn't sound safe. And you might say, okay, sir, no problem. How about this? I set up two-factor authentication so that the minute the email gets sent, you're also gonna receive a text message with a five-digit code that you'll input into the email so that you're secure. Again, we have a CC list on who we want these to go to. That's why I said if they're not a part of the transaction or need to sign, then there's no reason for them to be a signer on it just have them be a CC and you automatically CC yourself, but you have additional contacts to CC here. Or you can add a new CC yourself if you need to, right? Just first name, last name, email. Additionally, adding signers is by pressing this button, add a reviewer by pressing this button, that's entirely up to you, but what a reviewer is going to do is after the whole packet is completely signed, they're gonna get it and they're gonna have to verify with a little, 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 uh, I'm losing the words, check mark, thank you. They're gonna have to verify every single signature to make sure. And once they verify it, then the packet is complete and ready to download in PDF. So we're not gonna do that now. We don't need any reviewers specifically. Finally, before we click that next, because it's very crucial, some people, I don't know what you're doing, but you're sending things 
not in the time zone of the US specific, you're sending things GMT time. So many people I'm calling are giving me a call and saying, Joey, it's been five hours and I've tried to send this document like six times and I don't know why my clients are not getting it. And I help them and we go through and we troubleshoot and we find out the whole time they're either in an Eastern time zone, a central time zone or a mountain time zone. Guys, you gotta be in the time zone that you're in Pacific time so that when you press send at 3 p.m., it gets sent at 3 p.m. Because if you choose 3 p.m. with mountain time, it's not 3 p.m. over there, it's later. It's not gonna happen right away because it's gonna happen based on your time. That's looking good, we're gonna press next. While that loads, I'm going to get a drink of water here. We're just pressing about the hour mark here. All right, thank you. So now we're back here. This is the last step, right? And this is just designing it. So now when we're using a form that's already part of the CAR library, it automatically tags people's signatures and what they need to sign. But if we were to add a third party form, I wanna show you how we can add signatures to that. So we would go through, right? We can see they're already attributed, seller two, seller one, Joey Salinas. But maybe somewhere right here, we need another signature. Let's just do it for all intents purposes, right? So we need to make sure that we're choosing the right signer at the top right. Do we need Joey to sign, seller two Sue to sign, or seller one John to sign? So I'm gonna say that I need to sign something right here. Then we're gonna go right under to the drag and drop. These are all the tools that we're going to need specifically, right? Sign here, sign here optional, initial here, initial here optional, if we want any bullets or buttons, right? Or any specific text, we can. Also the timestamp. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and click on it, hold it, and drag it to wherever we need. Do I need a little signature right there? Boom, okay? Do I wanna drag the timestamp? I can do that. Or you see this little gear. I don't know if you can see the little gear right there. If we click on that gear, we can flip this vertically. But if we click on that, glare, that gear, we can flip this horizontally. We also can add a timestamp, a date stamp, a name block, or change the signer directly from here. Or copy this, cut this, delete it, or cancel this input. So we have all those options there. Additionally, we have markup tools for this if you wanted to add specific text or highlights or boxes for your clients while they're signing. Easily jump through pages. And once we're finished with all of the signing and we made sure everyone is where they need to be, we're good to go ahead and send this off for signature. We'll finally click on next. It's gonna let you know you have two options. You can either customize your own email to send out, hey, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, Sue and John, uh, please take the time that you need and fill this out and get back to me with any questions. Or you know what, let the system do it. Just send those invitations. I've been working hard enough, send them out. Just kidding, they'll be nice and kind and let them know that there's a nice signature packet waiting for them that needs their attention. So we're not gonna send this. We're just gonna go ahead and continue without saving. It's gonna tell me thank you for using Digital Link 2 again. That took me out of my transaction, so I gotta go back to that page. And we can see when we create a packet, now I did cancel this, so it is pending, but we can see that when we create a packet, it tells us the information on there. We can easily come back and see the envelope. We can see when it was created. We can see the signing status, whether it's pending or signed already. If we needed to edit someone's information because we got it wrong just a little bit, we can right here. We can add additional signers, add additional documents, or edit or stop or pause this download or this document. Now, when you do edit or stop or pause or add a signer, it's gonna cancel it all together and re-go out with the form. I 
I really apologize if you hear that car. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So that was our E sign, right? Again, we have history of everything that we've done, all input, and finally a marketplace to buy additional products. Now, I want to go back into the parties before we get out of the transactions and go into something else because I want to show you how to share those documents. Again, it's going to be really fast here, and maybe I'll do a little bit more advanced training after. Uh, but look at, let's say we want to send something to seller one John, but it's not for him to sign. We don't need you to sign, John. I need you to collaborate with me, okay? What we're going to do, we're going to click this little share icon. When we click this share icon, we're putting the permissions for John on what he can do with the content we're sharing. All right, so seller one John, can he edit forms? Can he upload his own documents? Can he view the history? Right? We have a stop sharing date on. He can only share up until tomorrow or up until today. This is his only option. And then it tells us to select the forms or documents you want to share with seller one, John. And so we can select the specific residential listing agreement. John, again, this isn't to sign. This is to collaborate on the document. Maybe this isn't the listing agreement, but maybe instead of using Glide to do the in-person AVID, you are doing the AVID through here. So you want a little bit of a collaboration. So you're gonna send him the document because most of you guys will try to print it out or do it like that and go over to him. We don't need to do that anymore. We have the collaboration button. So if you want some more info about this and how to set this up and how this looks for them, there will be a training on this, maybe a little quick tip because it's not going to take too long. Uh, or you can email me at outreach at daor.com and I'll send you over a little bit more information about it. Okay. Save and send or just save his permissions if we wanted to just save his permissions is how we're going to do that for seller one John. Right, and when we come in, we have more things, right? We have all of his information. Look at all of the information we can put into John. And we can even do a signing representative with a number specifically. Nice little photo we can add of John, a little creepy. Excuse me, can you just pause for my transaction? So that was all the information for the transaction. We're almost clearing up here. I appreciate you all bearing with me for this. There was a lot to go over and a lot still to do and so much more you can utilize inside of this software. It's not funny. Now, we moved on from transactions, which we've started. We've already seen it, our 8617. This is it active. Our comments go here. We have our templates nice and set up and ready for us. But now let's say we wanted to add additional documents we can do that through our doc inbox and that can be directly through our email. So maybe we want to apply this email somewhere so that emails can start coming into our doc inbox. Or maybe we want to upload third party documents into here. We easily can add document directly from our computer or for one of those systems. When we add the document here, look at this test signature document that I uploaded. Now I did it because I wanted to show at a time how we can easily take the signatures and put them where we need them, even for a document that I created on Word. I think this is a Word document or a PDF, right? To show you that virtually any document can be uploaded and sent for an e-signature with the
Okay, I think I'm back. I don't know where I went for just a second. I appreciate you guys bearing with me. I think everyone can still see me. I believe everything's still good here. So right, we were on the sample document that virtually any document can be uploaded and sent for e-signature. And when we took that document that we upload here, we're gonna easily click into it. And all we'll do is either move to transaction, which will take it out of our doc inbox and put it into our transaction, or we'll copy it to a transaction so we can keep it here and over there, print it out, email it, right? Now along the top, additionally, after doc inbox are our tasks. Now, this task tab is gonna show us all of our tasks due for all of our transactions. As you can see, look at the different transaction names and all of my different tasks. I can see my coronavirus property entry advisory and declaration needs review. That's because it's no longer applicable. Uh, I can see my cover sheet that's not been started, my follow-up that's not been started. And similarly, I can see this in a checklist view, in a calendar view, or in a board view. And I can filter these out, create urgent tasks, email these tasks, or see responsible party members. Again, your different calendars that you can upload besides zip form is your Google and your Microsoft calendar. So you can have everything nice and synced together for you. Additionally, is that contacts field, again, similar to the parties, but you can add your own contacts here, whether this is personal offerage or brokerage, right? So this includes like the education in case you wanna send out emails. You can send out emails directly through here, Maybe you build a form and send it right through here. And all we'll do if we need to create a new one is an add new. Additionally, it'll ask us to put a bunch of information for them. We only need to put information that's relevant for our contact. Finally, you do have a partners page that I'd love to take you through in case you feel that you need additional systems to support you through this. These are all the systems that easily link and connect with Zipforms transactions. And finally, I wanna show you the help center because you always have my support and my assistance, but guys, sometimes I get busy. There's only one of me and there's almost 5,000 of you. And sometimes the call is as simple as just do this. And sometimes the call is as simple where I'm just like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I want you guys to see these other resources. And if you can't get a hold of me, you can call Zipforms directly or call CAR directly. You can come in here and come into the learning center to learn something really quick in-app guided help, or just send them some feedback about something that's not working right, guys. Again, from any page that you're on, you actually do have a guided help. If you click on guided help, it's going to give you information and walkthroughs and videos based on the page that you're on. So, right, so this is the partners page, but if we went to the task page and chose guided help at the bottom, it's gonna give us things that are gonna help support us for the tasks page. Similarly, the same thing for transactions or for forms. That guided help is going to give us uh, walkthroughs and videos on how to do those specific sections and things we need in those specific sections. Guys, I know this, guys, I appreciate you continuing and joining with me. I don't know some of the things. This was our first hybrid class. And now I wanna share one more thing with you because I really do want to know. I had to wear this mask this whole time, right? But there is something that I want to see. Did wearing this mask make it difficult for you to understand this class? Anyone? If it did, I really need to know. Is it that I need to speak up? How do you feel about this? Because this is probably how we're going to have to do the hybrid classes, at least on my end. And of course, I need to know, do I need to get a microphone so you guys can hear me much clearer and much crisper, right? Maybe get one of those that come down through here. Or do I need to get something in front here, maybe a boom mic? Or am I perfectly fine? Joey, you're perfectly fine. Well, I appreciate you guys, 100% not at all. So that's good to know, that's good to know. Guys, there's one more thing I'm gonna leave you with. So you can see your little handout section. I hope you guys can see that file right there. I'm gonna leave you guys something called the Zip Mobile Knowledge Base. So hopefully you guys can see that.
So that you guys hopefully can download that. This is the zip form mobile guys. Everything that we went through, you can do through your mobile app guys. It's the same process and the same system. Just a little bit smaller, of course, because we are doing it through, <laughs> we are doing it through the, the phone, but it has all of the same features that you can use inside of the zip form plus just through your phone. So you want to make sure that you check that out guys, because you can easily view transactions and there's, even one additional step that's perfect for the phone. The phone allows you to do signatures directly on the phone using a signing service that's not available on ZipForm Plus called TouchSign. As you can see, all you have to do is generate that signature right there for your client to have them sign it. It's very easy and very simple for them. Now again, guys, I appreciate all your time with me. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. I'm available Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. If not me, then you have other resources available. I appreciate you guys joining me today for this class. Make sure you have a greater D-A-O-R day, and I will see you guys soon.